Oh hi, welcome to the latest video. Well, in this video, I'm going to do a product review. A product review of a new webcam I received to do a review on from a company called BenQ. Now this webcam is not ordinary. It has some features that I've never seen before in another webcam, which is why I agreed to review it. So I'm going to do a box opening. I'm going to show you what it comes with. We'll talk about some of the features and related to the things that it comes with. And then we'll see how it all works out when I test it. So go ahead, stay tuned. And if you stay till the end, you'll see what it looks like and hear what it looks like using the built-in microphone. Okay, here it is in its packaging. Not a lot of colors, but it seems to cover a lot of information on the package. Let me open, let me open this guy up and see what we got inside. There we go. Okay. So what does it got here? Some paperwork. It has a quick start guide. And I guess this is all the warranty stuff. There is also a full user manual that uh, I have the link down below uh, in the notes to show you where to get that. It's much more detailed. Got a nice piece of foam protecting the camera. Let's see what we got in here. Okay. So here's the webcam itself. It has a USB 2.0 cabling. It has a protective piece of plastic here. I'll go ahead and pull it off now so I don't forget. It can either be put on its stand or it can be portable from what I understand. Here's the stand that goes on the monitor. And this is unusual. I've never seen this before. It actually has a weight to it on the back of it. So it would go on the monitor this way. It looks like it connects to the camera. It just lies in here like this. But it has a weight back here. It is fully adjustable from what I understand. So if you want to adjust to different size monitors, it adjusts quite a ways. That's a pretty wide monitor to handle that one. And I think the reason it has the weight is because the idea is to be able to tilt the camera down. So once it's on a monitor, you can tilt it down and use it as a document viewer. So you need something to support the extra weight of the webcam itself pointing downward. So that's why it has this weight here. It's supposed to be almost uh, about five feet in length, the cable. I won't expend it right now. Let's get this straightened out. What else do we got in the box? We have a, I understand that is a macro lens. So this connects up to the front like this, like this, uh, like this. It goes right into the front. Looks like it's magnetic magnetically held. And that way you can go down and really lose it as a microscope. So it actually has three main features to it. It can be a webcam, it can be a document viewer, or it can be a microscope. So the lens itself has zoom up to 15 times, and then this becomes another 15x for the macro. That's pretty good. What else do we have in here? This thing is actually a lens cover. So let's say you want to cover it up for privacy purposes. It goes on here, and that's also magnetically held. OK? That's cool. What else do we have here? Open this up. And here we have the actual controller that's exclusive to any webcam I've seen. It lies flat on a table, let's say, like this. And you can remotely control. You can adjust the focus, I believe, by turning this knob here. And it has the various functions that you want to do. Autofocus, manual focus, mute. It has the ability to do still, so it'll freeze. There's a little snowflake in there. It can freeze to it. Okay. But you need the software that this thing requires. I think it's called eSpire. Inspire, excuse me. Okay, right now I'm doing a screen capture of where the BenQ Inspire application will be running. So if I run the application using the link that's in the notes below, the Inspire application is running through the web page. It's asking me to confirm the cam, which it defaulted to one of my other devices. So I'm going to have to change that. But the microphone did pick up currently, which means the Inspire is going to pick up from the BenQ camera. But let me make sure that the video shows from that as well. So I'll go down, down my list and I see the BenQ. I'm going to say allow that. 
and I have to confirm it with this button, which is what I'll do. And there we are. It now sees the video. I mean, the picture's okay. Uh, it's not like my highest quality webcam, but right now it doesn't look that bad. Now I have the little wheel that they give us for controlling it in front of me, and I'm going to try some of the things on it. For example, if I click, if you look in the lower right hand corner, there's a little A here in a box, a dashed box. Keep your eye on that as I hit the autofocus manual focus button. And now it went into manual focus. And I can adjust it with this slider. I can set the focus to whatever I want. I'm going to go back to autofocus by hitting it again. So look at the little thing on the lower right hand corner of the screen as I hit this. And it's gone off and we're back into autofocus. Now, if I want to try some of these other ones, for example, mute is the next one in line. If you look in the same area, you'll see the microphone. It's currently in white. When I hit this, it goes red. So the microphone, as picked up by the BenQ camera, is not recording me. But since I'm using my mixer, that's why you're hearing me now. I'll hit it again, and it goes off. If I want to do a freeze screen, that's actually this little, looks like a snowflake here. I'll hit that, and now it's frozen screen on me. If I hit it again, it'll unfreeze. There we go, unfrozen. It also has a general focus button here. It's gonna to try the center of the screen to focus. So if I hit that, you'll see a little indicator on the screen showing where it's going to try to center focus. Now I'm not there right now, so I will have to move myself into that position if I want that to, uh, to actually you know, take hold of my face. So that's how this little button works here. And I already showed you, if I turn this in and out, the ring, it can zoom in and out. It's a little bit shaky, but it does work for the zooming in and out. So that's how it looks on the Inspire web application provided by BenQ. So now I put a piece of paper down in front of it, in this case the product specifications, and I'm going to bend the camera down from its mount. And it flips automatically upside down. So we see the product specifications. I can actually make it focus by hitting the focus button here. And I can look at the paper. You'll see it the way I see it if I was sitting over there on that side of the page. If I take it off the mount completely, let me bring it back up, and then just pull it straight up, I can switch it around, and you can now see my setup here. I'm holding it in my hand. Now I'm hand holding it in front of me. I'll focus it. And there we go. Okay, well, continuing to hand hold it, pointing down now so it's acting like a document viewer. I'm going to hit the light button that's at the top. Let's see what we got. The light is on. It temporarily blinked but then it auto white balanced. Let me go ahead now and put the 15x microscope attachment to it and see what we got. I'll put this right on here. It's magnetically held and then I will go down and we'll see what it looks like here when I'm looking at this document up close and personal. Let me see if focusing it would make a difference on that. Not really. So that's about as clear as we're going to get it. Okay, so that takes care of the microscope mode, and it does work, huh? Okay, I've gone ahead and changed the record sound from the BenQ IdeaCam rather than from my own sound system on this computer. How does that sound? Does it sound much different from the previous one? I'm sure it does, but how does the quality sound? Okay, I decided to do the final conclusion and my comments, the review comments on this, using the actual BenQ Inspire Cam. Now I'm using OBS, that's where this is coming from, that you see this image, and I just wanted to give you my overall impression. Well, let me give you some of the things that bother me a lot. First of all, the aspect ratio. As you can see here by this particular screen image, it is 4 by 3, not 16 by 9, like most of the higher end uh, webcams would have. You can crop the top and bottom in, but you're trying to adjust to the fact that the, the actual aspect ratio is not what it should be by doing that. And that also affects why it's less than 4K. It's close to it, but it's not 4K. I would give it maybe a 3K at best, and even then, maybe a little less than that if you added up the actual pixel, horizontal, and vertical uh, layout of the, uh, of the sensor that this thing has. As you can see in the specs, for example, the other thing is, and this is probably the biggest thing, is the fact that you have to use a web application to do a lot with it. 
it's I understand it's meant to be used with applications, you know, such as Zoom and you know other types of connection applications to connect to other people. I understand that. However, it should be able to run standalone. And the fact that they do supply a actual application that can be locally installed for an Apple computer but not Windows, you know, that bothers me a lot. I do not like having to depend upon a web application. You never know when you have to run it offline. What if you just want to use it like we're using it for a document viewer? You know, you may want to use it online, but you may not. You may want to do that locally, for example. And there are several other things, if you think it through, that would be a problem. Overall, I think let's, the value is just not there. It's a higher end cost type web device, web camera device. And there are many other competitors out there that you will find that for similar or slightly less price, you can get a lot of the features that we're missing. Oh, I forgot to mention, the only way that this control remote wheel would work is through the web application. It does not work through OBS. It does not work if you just use it as a regular camera, which it will work on Windows as a regular camera. So those are all the, the real things that, you know, sort of take my, the wind out of my sails on this device. But if you're interested, I put a bunch of links down below to where you can buy one. I also put links to the company itself if you're interested in learning more about it. The actual manual, a hard copy manual, they do provide. And I put the link down for that as well. So you're free to go ahead and take a look. Please give me any comments if uh, your experience is different than what I've have encountered in using this device. Otherwise, thank you for watching.